This is going to be a study about Bible space travel. This is a study to get you interested in your Bible and to show you that the Bible isn't just a bunch of names. Many Christians will call you a nut or make fun of you for talking about things like these and and that is because they want to take away the supernatural aspects of the Bible. They only want to use it for comforting themselves and counseling and want to only take the practical look at the Bible. They don't want to talk about the doctrine or the supernatural things that God wrote in his book. Uh, and that's because these things require study and much study is a weariness to the flesh. But the Bible says to study to show yourselves approved unto God. But the first one we're going to look at, the first space traveler in the Bible would be Enoch. And in Genesis 5.22, it says, And Enoch walked with God after he beget Methuselah three hundred years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch is the Old Testament type of the translation of born-again believers, what you know as the rapture of the church. In Hebrews 11.5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. He was translated before Noah's flood. He needed no space shuttle or space suit. And he was better after the translation because he went from walking around on a sinful world to standing in the third heaven with his feet physically touching the ground in heaven. And Enoch never dies. So he is a exception to Hebrews 9.27 which says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Some force him into being one of the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. And by doing this, they lose Enoch as the type of the translation of the born-again believer in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. Because the born-again believers that are here at the translation will not see death just like Enoch didn't see death. But the next space traveler we're going to talk about is the chariot of fire. And this is not a UFO or space shuttle. It is a literal chariot of fire and it is pulled by literal horses of fire just like the bible says in second kings 2 11 through 12 and it says and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and elijah saw it and he cried my father my father the chariot of israel and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. So e Elijah never died, but will come back in the time of Jacob's trouble as one of the two witnesses, and he will be killed by the Antichrist. Right now, though, he is physically in heaven walking around. Then space traveler number three would be Moses. When Moses died, God himself buried his body, and his body was hidden. So, in Deuteronomy 34, 5 through 6, it says, But so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. So his body was transported to the third heaven at a later time by Michael the archangel. And I'm sure Michael the archangel can travel through space without any equipment at the speed of light. And Jude 1 9 says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, dost not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. And then you have Moses and Elijah both appearing with Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. In Matthew 17, 1 through 3, it says, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. So their physical bodies had been in the third heaven all the time and are still there now. And they will return to be the two witnesses in the time of Jacob's trouble. And Moses is another exception to the Hebrews 9.27 rule that says, 
that it is appointed unto men once to die because he dies two times just like Lazarus whom Jesus resurrected dies two times so Elijah travels through space in a whirlwind back in two second Kings he then comes back down from the third heaven to the Mount of Transfiguration then will come back down in the future to the time period called the time of Jacob's trouble as one of the two witnesses then he will be resurrected after his beheading and go back to the third heaven once again so Moses dies and his physical body travels to the third heaven uh, his physical body comes back down again from the third heaven to the Mount of Transfiguration and then back up again only to return back down during the time of Jacob's trouble as the other part of the two witnesses and then the next one we have would be Jesus Christ Luke 25 or Luke 24 50 through 51 says and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them and it came to pass while he blessed them he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and then Acts 1 9 through 11 it says and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven so Jesus Christ's physical body ascends up to heaven if heaven wasn't a real physical place above us then why would he ascend up Acts 11 says they stood gazing up into heaven so he could have went out of the earth slowly notice also Luke 24 50 through 51 says he lifted up his hands and verse 51 says he was carried up into heaven so he put up his hands before takeoff and Satan counterfeits this with Superman the ascension of Jesus clearly proves that heaven is a real place located up above and it isn't some other dimension Jesus will travel through space again in the future, which we will talk about later on. And the next space traveler would be Satan. Although Satan sinned, he still has access to the throne room of God, outer space, and earth. Job 1, 6-7 shows he talks to God and accuses the saints before God. He's the accuser of the brethren. Those who teach he is in hell as king over hell and that he doesn't have access to heaven anymore obviously didn't read the book of Job and then Job 2 7 even talks about Satan leaving the presence of the Lord and Job 26 13 said God's hands formed the cr crooked serpent we know that the crooked serpent is Satan and Satan is also referred to as a dragon in Revelation 20 and verse 2 it says and he laid on laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years then in Revelation 12 7 it says and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So, and then Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So these verses show Satan in heaven and then on the earth in just a short time. And this verse is future. It hasn't happened yet. So you can see by these verses, Satan travels through space frequently, and in his natural state, he is Leviathan that is located in the deeps, and you can read about that in Job 41, 31. And then space traveler number six that we're going to talk about would be the cherubim. And Ezekiel 1, 4 through 5 says, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cl cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man these four living creatures which aren't angels have the ability to travel through space they are mentioned here appearing on the earth to Ezekiel and then again in Ezekiel chapter 10 they are also mentioned as being in heaven so this proves they traveled back and forth Revelation 4 6 through 8 talks about them saying Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And also don't forget the wheels which came down that are powered by the spirit of the living creatures, with God's throne being over top of this in Ezekiel 1, 20 through 26. It says, Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. 
tither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. And then verse 26 says, And above the firmament that was over the, their heads was a likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And then space traveler number seven we're going to talk about is angels. Angel or Angels are mentioned in heaven in verses like Revelation 5.11. It says, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. But then uh, they're also mentioned as being on earth when you read the story of them appearing to Abraham and Lot. This proves they traveled back and forth as well. Also, uh, you can see where Michael the archangel traveled back and forth with the body of Moses as we talked about before. And then also the fallen angels have access to the third heaven and are mentioned as fighting against Michael the archangel in Revelation 12.7. It says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. They also are in company with Satan when he approaches God about Job in Job chapter 1, 6 through 7. So fallen angels have access to the earth and are at work in the earth now. Revelation even talks about some that are bound in the river Euphrates in Revelation 9, 14 through 15. And then another space traveler would be unclean spirits who have the ability to enter the third heaven and even talk to God. In Second Chronicles 18, verses 20 through 22, it says, Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord had, hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. And you can read about that again in 1 Kings 22, 21 through 22. So unclean spirits are also heavily working on the earth. I believe unclean spirits are different than fallen angels. These spirits can work miracles. They can heal, speak in tongues, and whatever else people may label as a miracle. And Revelation 16, 14 says, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. If people would realize the Bible talks about space travel and study the life forms in the Bible and the people and beings who do space travel, then they wouldn't be deceived. All of the shows and documentaries about UFOs make people think there is evolved humanoids on other planets coming here just to see what Earth is like or to help people on the Earth. But the Bible truth is the aliens are just unclean spirits, fallen angels, and Satan. They're going to and fro on the earth, seeking whom they may devour. A lot of people think the strong delusion after the rapture will be the news claiming it was a UFO invasion. While holy and kind beings also travel back and forth through space, such as the angels. But evil beings also travel back and forth. And then some space travelers are the Old Testament saints. Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one through 53 says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many, many of the bodies of the saints which, which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Many of the saints which slept arose and walked around. This shows that no zombie movie has an original storyline, and the reason Satan always makes the zombies bad guys is because these dead people walking around in Matthew 27 are the saints. Many of these Old Testament saints were able to go to the third heaven because Jesus Christ had shed his blood. I'm not sure if they got glorified bodies here, but even if they didn't, they were still able to go straight to the third heaven. And Ephesians 4, 8 through 10 talks about this and says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave, gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? 
He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Then the next space travelers would be the bride of Christ. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 talks about this and says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So all born-again believers will meet the Lord in the air at the translation or the rapture. This is what I was telling you that Enoch typified in the Old Testament when he said, He was not, for God took him. The born-again believer will get a glorified body at this time. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-54 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must, corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. This glorified body will be able to stand the dangers of space travel and breathe underwater as it goes through the sea of glass that is talked about in Revelation. And your body will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. You not only go up with the Lord, but Enoch prophesied about how we come back down with the Lord. In Jude 1.14 it says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And the book of Joel even describes this event in great detail. If you look at Joel chapter 2, verses 4 through 11, it says, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. As a strong people set in battle array before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the horses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, before his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very very terrible, and who can abide it? And you can notice here we come back on horses, which may be like the horses of fire that pulled Elijah's chariot. And then the next space travelers will talk about is tribulation saints. Just like there is a rapture for some of the Old Testament saints, and the body of Christ, there is also one of the tribu one for the tribulation saints. I'm not sure of the exact time this happens, just like I'm not sure the exact time the rapture for the body of Christ is going to happen. But it seems this rapture of tribulation saints happens somewhere towards the end of the tribulation. And Matthew twenty four, forty three, forty two says, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken on the other left, two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken on the other left. Watch therefore for ye know not what hour your Lord doth, doth come. Many will use that for the pre-tribulation rapture, but I believe that's also referring to the post-tribulation rapture and not the pre-tribulation rapture. Although the same thing will happen at the pre-tribulation pre rapture, one will be taken and the other left, but I don't believe Matthew 24 mentions a pre-trib rapture. This same rapture seems to happen when Moses and Elijah hear the words come up hither in Revelation 11:12, it says, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And this rapture seems to be toward the end of the tribulation, because these same saints appear at the marriage supper of the Lamb, which happens right before the second coming. Revelation 19:7 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. 
and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now verse 11 talks about the second coming. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. The way you know that these tribulation saints go into the marriage feast is because Matthew 25 talks about ten virgins, five wise virgins and five foolish. The five wise get to go into the marriage. Notice this isn't the body of Christ because the body of Christ is called one chaste virgin. While there, these in Matthew 25 are virgins in the plural and they go into the marriage feast but aren't married to the bridegroom. The one chaste virgin is, and if the Old Testament, and if all the Old Testament saints didn't go up after Jesus's resurrection, then this is probably probably where the rest of them will go up. Notice Matthew twenty-seven said, "Many of the saints which slept arose, many of them, but these tribulation saints appear in heaven, showing they traveled from earth to heaven." And you can read about that in Revelation 7, 9 through 14. But the next one we're going to talk about, the next space traveler is New Jerusalem. Revelation 21, 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. New Jerusalem, like the chariot that Elijah hitched to ride on, is another inanimate object that travels through space. John 14, 2 through 3 says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. And then Hebrews thirteen fourteen. For here have we no continuing city, but seek one to come. So there is a city prepared for us that is greater than any big city down here and way better, way better than the first, very first city which was built by Cain in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 17. And Revelation 21.10 says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. The apostle Paul calls New Jerusalem the mother of us all. In Galatians 4.26 he says, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. And this is why science fiction movies and books called giant UFOs, motherships. And then Proverbs 29.15 says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Our mother is New Jerusalem, not Mother Earth, and we bring New Jerusalem to shame if we don't fellowship with other believers. We don't want to be a child left to himself. And then Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. New Jerusalem is said to be above in Galatians 4, 26, so we should set our affection on it and not on the things of this present evil world or things that are on what people call Mother Earth, which is stupid to call it that. And the Common Man's Reference Bible has a great footnote on the subject of New Jerusalem. David Hoffman wrote on page 1885, The splendor of the New Jerusalem will exceed the ability to describe it. The shape of the city will be like two pyramids with the bases attached. The two capstones will make up the top and the bottom of the city with a wall around the middle of the city. It will exceed 1,200 miles in height, length, and breadth. It will be made of pure gold. The wall will have 12 gates with the sparkling splendor of precious stones. The bottom point of the city will be near the new earth as the city floats and glistens around the earth as a satellite. I hope this study helped you realize the Bible is an amazing and interesting book.
that goes into great detail about everything. It isn't just about how to live right about right, and it isn't just about salvation. It tells you tells you about everything, and it tells us things that will blow our mind if we'll just get into it and study it, like he commanded us to do in Second Timothy two fifteen. He also commands us to hear it and read it, and mark it. And I hope you will do that after hearing this study.